Ladies and gentlemen, feast your eyes on the Spike Swallower, Mary Slaughter. Mary Slaughter makes up one of the sideshow sights at the Clive Barker's Infernal Parade. get a better look at Mary Slaughter, let's figure out how tall the figure stands. Now this is one of those setup figures where she is made up of a larger frame, so we're going to of course have to factor that in. You can't simply take her out of that, so right to the top tells us that based on this tape measure here tells us that the figure stands from bottom to the top at 11.6 inches. If you want to switch that, however, to centimeters, that's okay. Centimeters, you're looking at just shy of 30 centimeters, 29.6 to be exact. Here's what she looks like. We'll just move her over a little bit. Here she is next to Tom Requiem. Now, one thing I did do, though, with uh, Mary Slaughter is I reversed her. So, actually, if you spin the figure around, if she looked like that... Uh, you would technically then be able to attach the hitch right there and attach the two figures side by side or attach them one in front of the other. Now, I've just happened to got her flipped the other way, which means when you are looking at her, you're going to be looking at her from the back. Uh, if you took the contraption, the setup, and flipped it around, planked it back down, she would, of course, be facing this way. Or what you can also do, too, if you take the hitch... Just to show you that it is swappable, you can attach the hitch on this side as well. And then you could have her from the front, or I guess you would want to bring her around this way. There we go. And you could bring him this way, and you can attach it like that. Again, it just depends on which way you're facing the figure. Um, she does technically have the means, I think, to flip, like I said, flip the contraption the opposite way around. I just so happen to have it this way. But there are the two figures so far from what we've looked at from the Infernal Parade. Tom Requiem being on the right, and Mary Slaughter being on the left. Generally, of course, most reviewers, when they are reviewing something, will prep the figure. Getting it out of packaging, putting it together, and spending some time with the figure. It unfortunately means, when it comes to the McFarland stuff, my prep time takes a little bit longer because there's a whole lot more to put together on her. From start to finish, this figure took me probably about 10 to 15 minutes to actually get everything put together, and I'll kind of show you how everything came about. Uh, one thing I am already experiencing, though, is war wounds. I don't know if you can see it on my hands. No, they looks like they've healed up. Putting on these blasted, spurred tires, these wheels, uh, can be a bit of a pain in the butt, um, especially putting on the smaller wheels, I find, are the hardest to put on, because you're trying your best to push these on without, of course, breaking the wheels in the process. They're on for the time being, but I may have to put a little bit more pressure on them. The back ones aren't so much the issue. The larger tires, I usually can get those on pretty easy. It's these front blasted tires. The wheels here on the front, the smaller ones, are a little bit more problematic. Um, as with Tom uh, Requiem, you have the little signage here on the side of the cart indicating that Mary Slaughter is the Spike Swallower. That does sound painful. On the top there, if we flip it up, you can see nice, much like Tom's, that these are made up of like floorboards here, and then they have been bracketed in place. Some nice detailing here on the bottom support structures that are, of course, going to hold the frame to keep Slaughter in place here. YouTube being as what it is now with naming things in titles. I wonder how passable the name Mary Slaughter 
Barry Slaughter in the title. I wonder how well that's going to play out. Anyways, though, we won't worry about that for the time being. What we will worry about, though, is looking at this really neat looking figure. So for assembly, let's just run through the list. You get this as the main bottom piece. You have to add the tires or the wheels and you have to attach them via these metal posts, these rods that stick through. And even then, that could be a bit of a problem because they don't always line up into the holes on either side. But nonetheless, this has to be assembled. The tires, the wheels have to be assembled. And then for slaughter, you have to add, you have to put this post in and this post in. But before you do that, you have to take these, ooh, that looks painful. Ooh, that looks painful. You have to take these rods, these copper colored rods. One are already attached to one side. You're going to take the figure and she's got holes on one side of her torso and holes on the other side of her torso. But you are going to literally impale her to the one side, the three poles here. And then you're going to attach these ones and these are loose. You're going to feed them through the holes. I'm walking you through this just in case you want to know how extensive this is. Feed these through, attach them into these holes, and then you basically want to attach these two posts to the bottom. And then you want to take this section here, feed that through the top. Oh, and then there's more. And then you're going to take these hula hoops of pain and feed them through the little openings there on her shoulders and attach them to one another. This one successfully went through, although the whole time I'm like, please don't break, please don't break, please don't break. This one went through, but unfortunately the peg right, uh, right, right there, the peg broke. Short of me just gluing it, which is something I'm ultimately going to have to do, these would then attach. I mean, it's it's not the end of the world. Like I said, these will just attach to one another and complete the loops. And the loops will then be feeding through her. And I guess between the loops and then these rods on the sides, this is what's suspending the Spike Swallower Mary Slaughter. That's a lot of S's. It's a neat looking figure, I have to admit. Where in the deep bowels of McFarlane's mind did something like this generate? She is a tattooed woman, as you can probably see right there. Very little, unfortunately, in the way of clothing. And there's the back of her right there. Uh, here is her face. I'll just tilt her up so you can see what's going on. She, yes, is in fact swallowing a spike. Now they say on the packaging that she's swallowing a spike, but it actually looks more so like she's swallowing a sword or one of those curved swords. But we're going to go ahead and just call her the spike swallower because that's after all what the packaging touts her at being. It's again a more intricate sort of thing that you have to put together, but the end result is a beautiful looking piece. Beautiful in a slightly gruesome way, of course, but a splendid imagery of this character who has been suspended the way that she has. I don't even know how one would, in real world, I don't even know how one would get herself into a contraption like this, other than probably suspending herself first from the hoops, and then once she's suspended in place, these little rods are impaled and stuck into the side of her. Um, again, I really do like the face sculpt, even though you can see her eyes are closed shut. She is sliding the one and only one sword or spike down into her gullet. This has always grossed me out when people have earrings like this, but she's got these skin flapped loops that is basically just suspending her via these gold ringlets here. Again, she's very nicely sculpted, very nicely detailed, even right down to her hair. It almost looks like she's got these dread-like hairs, um, probably even like done up in a slight makeshift ponytail or pigtails. Coloring is nice on this one. Slightly more tanned, slightly uh, more darker skin tone. It looks almost as if, as well, she has embedded herself with those little uh, little markers that they put on, sometimes under the skin. It looks like these have been put underneath her skin. Beads and other decoratives that she's put underneath her flesh there. And then we look at the top here, this glorious looking 
gold crowning here, the part of the top of the frame, has some nice additional red that they've added here and some red on the top here. It kind of looks like a starburst effect. As you could probably guess it, it probably takes no expert to tell you this, not that I'm an expert, but I can tell you that her posability, she's doing it right now. Okay, you want to blink? Okay, go ahead, blink. Still with us? Okay, you haven't missed anything. She has no posability, none whatsoever. But really, this is not sort of one of those figures that you want to be posing, nor would you really be asking for it to be posed. She is doing exactly what she needs to do, and another good example of McFarlane producing fantastic looking art pieces. Whatever comments I've made, certainly about uh, McFarlane toys in some of the, his future and current released figures, um, going back to some of the older stuff that he was producing like this are absolute works of art. This is something that I really wish that he will go back to as again he's going to be revisiting the movie Maniacs and some of the horror properties that he was best known for back in the day. If he can kind of keep to the same caliber of what he's doing here, I'm really excited to see what McFarlane has in store for us. Whatever pain this reviewer has endured by putting these pieces together, I know it's a far cry from the pain that Mary Slaughter is currently going through. Although I do feel like if she's done this long enough, she must enjoy her work. I don't know what the perks and the health benefits are, but she must enjoy what she does for a living, having things impaled into her body. McFarlane Toys somehow manages to balance both gruesome and beautiful in all of his pieces. This has been a proof with some of the pieces that we've looked at on this channel before. Uh, like the Tortured Souls line, for example. As gruesome and painful as those are to look at, there's a beauty that can be taken away from these. Mary Slaughter also is a good example of this. As painful as that looks to have those poles stuck to the side of her body, somehow McFarlane managed to pull off that this is still a beautiful looking piece that you can put on display. I keep wanting to say piece and I want to avoid from the fact of saying figure. Figure to me dictates something that you can pose and this figure really doesn't have any bit of posability. I think if anything you may be able to move her head but I didn't even bother to entertain that because everything is sort of like a domino. Moving one thing may affect the next thing and so on and so forth. These are very fragile collectibles to not only put in place and put together but to also stay like that as well. This is not something that I would look forward to dismantling at any given point and bagging away to open up and put on display later on. I'll probably indefinitely keep them on display because the pieces on them, the parts on them, can be very fragile to play around with. Still though, a nice looking collectible as we make our way through the Infernal Parade. I believe there's four still sight shows, side shows to be checking out. So hopefully you guys will be staying tuned and watching that during the month of Spotober. Today's spookerific review we were having a look at the Clive Barker's McFarlane Toys. This was the Infernal Parade, and this was Mary Slaughter. I don't know how that's going to work and jive for YouTube title, but we'll see what we can do. Stay tuned, guys, because we're going to be having a look at, like I said, some more sideshow freaks. I know freaks is probably not the greatest of words to be using. Some sideshow exhibits. That sounds a little bit more polished. Sideshow exhibits and other gruesome things are coming your way during the month of Spottober, so hopefully you guys have subscribed. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that little subscribe button that's located just below this video. And as always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do. I'll see you next time.